Nehemiah chapter 6, starting in verse number 1. And I know you're heavy, but please say amen. amen. The Bible says, Send Ballad and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arab. And the rest of our enemies found out. Look at the verb. It's the rest of our enemies. Oh, there's an enemy always connected to the work of God. I said there's an enemy and enemies always connected to the work and even the progress of God. Oh, you got to pay a price to come out, I promise you. And you got to pay even more of a price to stay out once God bring you out. Mm. So our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding, Nehemiah said, the wall, and that no gaps remain. That's prophetic right there. Not pathetic, prophetic. Though we had not yet set up the doors and the gates, St. Ballard and Gessim sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of, oh no, St. Ballard is an enemy, Tobiah is an enemy for context. He's trying to frustrate the man of God while he's working. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. And then look at that right there, Pastor. He said, meet me in Old No. That's already a red flag because it's called Old No. Mm. But again, if you're not in tune with God, you'll fall for that. But I realized, Nehemiah said, that they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. Nehemiah said, I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? You ain't that important. Four times, the Bible says, in verse number four, they sent the same message. And each time, I gave the same reply. Oh, he ain't going to stop at the first try. The enemy going to keep coming. But when you got your mind made up, no matter how many times he come, you just going to always be the same thing. See, he going to keep nagging and keep probing until he get you to submit. But that's why you got to know in whom you believe and what you believe in. Oh, you can't be persuaded. My God, come on, Paul said, I'm persuaded. Nothing, Pastor Ron says, separate me from the love of God. Too many of us, my God, we'll stand for the first time, but the third time we give in. We'll say no at 1.15 in the morning, but the next time, come on. Oh, yeah. Jump down to verse number eight. The word of God says, I reply, there is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. They were just trying to intimidate us. Talk about the enemies, y'all. Said Ballad and Tobiah. Imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued, Nehemiah said, the work with even greater determination. Father, thank you for the free, free, few minutes. Bless. Get in the way. I'm out of the way. I feel this one, God. Take control. Thank you for my son, Pastor Ron, and cover me in prayer, Lord, as we come out. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you for my beautiful wife, Lord, that's standing in my presence, Lord. Thank you for the body of going home for Christ believers as well as guests. We thank you for all of our children and grandchildren. Everything that's going on, be a wall of protection around the service tonight while we're doing business inside your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to take this time to encourage you tonight as I encourage myself. I am very encouraged at this season right now in my life, personally, church-wise. I can find a whole lot of stuff to get discouraged about, but I have to find something to focus on that's good. And if you all look at your life, there's a whole lot of good going on in your life. How about everybody do like this? Let's do that one more time. Some of you may say, I ain't in my right mind. Yeah, yes. You made it here tonight. You're in your right mind. Anytime you get to the house of the Lord, you're in your right mind. Now, you might lose your mind while you get in here, but you made it here. I can't get nobody to see. So I'm excited. Let's jump in this word. Let's look at the context of the book. As I told y'all, this is Nehemiah carrying on a great walk, work. As I jump over, I'm going to do a little reading. My God, he had a situation that took place. The Bible says Nehemiah asked them about the Jews who had returned from captivity. 
and about how things was going on in Jerusalem. Verse 3 says of chapter 1, it says, they said to me, things are not going well for those who, are, for those who have returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble. This is the report that they gave to Jeremiah, I mean Nehemiah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. He says, the wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates, my God, have been destroyed by fire. And as I was studying before I came to 6 o'clock intercessory prayer, the Bible says in verse 4, and I didn't preach, oh my God, this chapter many times, many different ways as the Spirit of God has given to me, but verse 4 said, when Nehemiah heard this news, listen to this right here, y'all. It says, when I heard this, Nehemiah said, I sat down and wept. Some things should make you cry. We just got to make sure we're crying about the right stuff and not the wrong stuff. He sat down and wept. In fact, the Bible says he just didn't cry for 10 minutes. The Bible says he wept for days. The Bible says then, Nehemiah said, I mourned, I fasted, and I prayed. That's three points right there. Three principles, three points. He mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. So he had focused prayer. He said, I didn't pray to Dominique. I didn't pray to Pastor Michelle. He said, I prayed to the capital G of heaven. Oh, my God, Pastor Ron. He prayed to the God of heaven. My God, see, sometimes we can't get our prayers answered because we're dependent and praying and focusing on the wrong thing and going to the wrong people. Yeah. Trying to get them to fix something that God said, I created, only I can fix it. I can't get nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so some of the stuff you're going to, go to God. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to everybody. Pastor, I, can't, I ain't got nothing for you. Go to God. Yeah. Yeah. Mourn, fast, and pray and watch God. That's what Nehemiah did. Because, see, Nehemiah had a great responsibility. My God, Sister Joyce, couldn't nobody do it for him but God. See, he needed a whole lot of favor. My God, I don't know why God taking me this way. He needed a whole lot of favor, my God, that he couldn't, he couldn't orchestrate, that he, could, he couldn't call. So he had to go, my God, to God, who God had to touch the king's hand, and the king had to write some letters to give him permission to travel and, and, and get some, uh, some logs. And he was, come on, he had a whole lot of favor that he needed. And he needed some favor from the king. There were some things that he needed to activate in the natural that he couldn't do. But the king had the power to. Oh, you... I said there's some things that he needed activated to manifest in the natural that he couldn't do. But the king had the power and authority to do it. So you got to go to God for some stuff. Yes. Your education ain't going to do it. Oh, my God, your background ain't going to do it, baby. Who you know and what you know ain't going to do it. Some of the things you got to go through, you got to go to God. Yes. And then let God touch that person's heart. And then they'll give you favor. Amen. But see, we don't want to go to God. We want to go to the pastors and the P12 because we don't want to put in no work. We want everything from God, but we, want, we don't want to pay the price to get it from God. This man fasted more and prayed because he knew that I got a, a tall order and I'm going to need some favor. I'm going to need the kings to write some letters. If you read the chapters in chapter 2 and 3 and all that, he needed some permission. He needed, he needed permission from other kings, my God, to be able to travel through certain territories to do certain things because you couldn't just run through people's territories. They'll kill you for that. So he needed some permission. He needed a letter in his hands to give to the king and say, look, I got permission from my king, my God, to come through this territory. So because the king and the king had favor one with another, he said, okay, the king gave you this, so my God, you can come through. But if he wouldn't have had that letter, he probably would have got killed. Yeah. Oh, Pastor, people sent this from going up for Christ to the kingdom of Connection Church? Free interest. Amen. Amen. You can't come without permission. Amen. See, some of you are trying to go places, but you won't have permission. You're trying to thank the Holy Ghost. So that's the context. Nehemiah's enemies tried to stop him from doing the Lord's work. The enemy always come against progress. Write that down. Enemies always comes against progress. But Nehemiah's dedication and service stands as a witness, y'all, of what a true servant of God is about. Is supposed to be about. Satan and his people are always trying, church, to get the servant of God, as you and I, to come down. But if we do, there are certain things that can't, that we can't, that we can expect to lose if we come down. I'm speaking prophetically. Listen to me. The enemy is trying to get the people of God everywhere to stop, to come down. But when we do, you and I must understand if we stop doing what God told us to do, we're going to suffer some loss. You can't stop doing what God told you to do and think that you're going to reap benefits. There's always consequences to wrong choices. 
But we don't, the shepherds don't want to tell y'all, tell us that. It's always consequences to wrong choices. Are y'all with me so far? And so I just want to talk to you about a few things that is, uh, could happen if you and I stop the work. So put point number one on the screen. I want to tell you right now, and I'm speaking prophetically into the ministry as we get ready to close out 2018. As I sat with the spiritual father this past Monday, my God, and began to pick his brain on some things. And God dropped this in my spirit, and I want to speak this into the atmosphere because many of us is faint because we've been doing great work. Life has got a hold of us. Situation has come about in life, and that's okay, my God. They're shifting. Some people has come. Some people has left. God has brought new people. God has shifted old people. Some of the old generation died off. New generation is coming in. There's a whole lot of things going on in the spiritual realm inside of going off for Christ Church, and the warfare, Pastor Dean, has even increased. If you are carrying on a great work, you should be feeling the warfare in your life. If you are making progress in your personal life, you should be feeling and sensing and seeing the warfare. Things, my God, that were smooth is now chaotic. As I just taught y'all, and I can close the book, anytime there's progress, here come the enemy. Some of you have made a declaration that I'm going to do better. Some of you have just said that, I, said that I, I'm not going to act like that, live like that. I'm not going to do that no more. It's clip, 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 clip. Okay, all is fine. But when you clip, 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 and you make those declarations, be ready to go to war, war, war. Yeah. Yeah. It's very simplistic, but it takes a lot of discipline to accomplish everything that I just said. It's one thing to clip, clip, clip. It's another thing to get it done. Yeah. It takes dedication to do the will of the Father. So the first thing you don't want to do, my God, is abandon your work. Yeah. That's naturally and spiritually. As I stated before, God has brought many of you here, my God, to add to what God is doing inside of a five-and-a-half-year-old church. And at times, because we're human, we tend to get discouraged. But some of our frustration and some of our discouragement come because we get involved, not just with the things we're doing in the ministry, but we get involved with a lot of stuff outside of ministry as well as in the ministry that God never told us to get involved in. That's why the Bible says you got to be led by the Spirit. That's why you and I, I and you, have to steward your life right. Stewardship is not just money. Are you with me so far? Amen. And so therefore, when you and I, I and you do not manage and we don't keep our life simple, my God, and we allow chaos, my God, to linger in our life, it chaps our energy and our strength and it causes us to lose focus. Yeah. Yeah. And why is it that the first thing that goes when it comes to Christian is your assignment in the house of the Lord? Why is it that we want to clip what God assigned and created us to do first, but we want to clip all that flesh that's killing our assignment? Right. Ooh, Jesus. We'll, we'll, we'll abandon God's call because we don't really carry that and hold that with any real significance. See what I'm trying to say? We, we really don't think there's really any real benefits, but we, won't, we, we, we see more benefits in that natural job because it gives us a paycheck. But we don't see, my God, the spiritual, my God, benefits of staying connected to the assignment in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now we put more emphasis on the natural paycheck. Oh, I don't want to mess with you right now. We put emphasis on, the, on some, on some manner, money. Yeah. See, I'm trying to say more than our spiritual assignment. When the Bible says all oh, that's going to burn up, but that spiritual assignment will last. Yeah. Help us, Pastor. Yeah. Help us. So it comes down to really we got a trust issue. Which is connected to a lack of faith, because we believe in God. We, we believe in that. We believe in that job more than we believe in the God who created the job. And so, why is it as I move that we quit on God before we quit on all this other stuff that God asks us to give up? We came to the encounters and nail stuff. Have you quit that? Are you mad enough at that flesh? Are you mad enough at that situation that's tormenting you in your private life? Why you don't? Why you don't quit that? But if somebody don't do something for you right in the church, you quit that. I'm, I'm done. I'm tired. Ain't nobody doing it. Keisha ain't coming to church. All. I'm tired of doing all this. See, because you, what, I just, what I just showed y'all is a bunch of flesh and very immature people. I'm just speaking in general in the body of Christ everywhere. So what did I'm saying? That when you and I get frustrated, we quit the work of God. So the title is Just Stay on the Wall. Simple, stay on the wall. Nehemiah's call and commission was too great of a work. Any work that is for the Lord is great work, y'all. You need to understand that. Everything is significant. From you vacuuming, for me, for me preaching. I can't do the things that I need to do, my God, without the people doing what they're doing. Yes. Yes. 
I need to know that while I'm standing up here, Pastor Ron, that my baby's up there is taken care of. And I know it because there's many men sitting around, walking around, making sure that everything is okay. You see what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, it takes all of us as a body to do what God has called us to do at this route, at this church. Now, if we had 12 people and everybody was just sitting right here and there wasn't nobody else in the building, I could get my focus right here. But my focus is here, here, and there. But it takes all of us. And so the enemy wants to try to frustrate the people of God everywhere to abandon the work. Now, you and I got to use some wisdom and ask yourself, my God, am I involved? Am I carrying on? What is in my life that I need to clip? My God is sapping my energy, sapping my strength. Well, I'm giving God, oh my God, not my fullness, not my whole heart. I'm giving God bits and pieces because I'm so tired and wired in my personal life. But it's the church's fault. Why is it we clip our responsibility to the house first? Some of us just don't apply to because you ain't doing nothing. So it don't matter. You heard eating. T.D. Jake said you got to feed what's feeding you. Every Sunday and every Wednesday, my God, you getting fed. But are you feeding the ministry? What you giving back? You should be reciprocating something back. You eating, you ought to give back. Yeah. When you go to Cheddar's, my God, and you eat the people's food, they expect for you to pay for that food. Yeah. So as you eat, you got to pay for that food. Yeah. Oh, it's real simple, but it's profound. Yeah. I'm trying to make it, my God, where you understand. You got to feed what's feeding you. Many people come from the body of Christ, son, and take, 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 take. I'm not just speaking. They're going. I'm just speaking. They take, take, take. My God, but this is a, this is a relationship. It's an exchange with God. When you died, when He died on Calvary, He gave an exchange. When He says, "Come to Me, my God, and come bring your burdens, come bring your pain, come bring your sin, and let Me give you My love, let Me give you My strength, let Me give you My hope." It's an exchange with God. Many people is coming, but they're not exchanging nothing. Oh, you're coming to get everything, but you ain't exchanging nothing, and that's why, my God, oh my God, things ain't shifting in your life. Okay. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. It's all good. Let's look at David's attitude about the work. Psalms 84:10. Write this down. Better is one day <laughs> in the courts than a thousand elsewhere. David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper, first lady, in the house of my God. You see, he took it ownership. He said, my, he didn't say your God, Teresa. He said, my God. Yeah. See, he made it personal, Laquetta. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell or live in the tents with the wicked. As I told her, some of us, uh, we're more comfortable around that which is not of God than we are around that which is is God, uh, of God. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I don't have to be on stage. Just let me open the door. Just let me open the door and let people into the kingdom. He said, I I desire that more than to be up here trying to preach and teach. I, I, I don't even have to be on the front row. Just put me over there in the corner. As long as I'm in heaven, I'm straight. As long as I can open the door for the people that's coming in, I'm good. What's your motives tonight? What's your motives tonight for real ministry? Do you desire to be a doorkeeper? For some of us, that's not enough because we want to be up here. We want to have this. Boy, but you don't know. When you get this right here, boy, it's a major, major price. They got to be paid to have this. This is not popular. Because the Bible says you and I will be judged more stricter yes. and more harsher. Yeah. Mm. Let's go a little deeper. Satan tried every trick he could to, my God, to get Nehemiah to come down. Oh, my God. But, and, and, but you have to just stay on the wall. Satan tried every trick to get Nehemiah to come down. Let me show you what I mean by that. He said this right here. Give me one second. Let me get it. He says, I asked him about the Jews who had returned from captivity and how, about, and how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, the, these things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble, he said. This is Nehemiah communicating. And disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by the fire. Now watch this right here. It says, Jeremiah, I mean, Nehemiah said, I arrived in Jerusalem. I'm sorry. Three days later, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I, he said, I had not told anyone about the plans God has put in my heart and Jerusalem. 
Sometimes we expose the enemy to our plans when God said, keep your mouth shut. Ouch. Right here, ouch. And see, then we blame everything on people and the devil. When we open up our mouth, we need to be blaming ourselves. See, that's what's the repentance in the house right there. You're exposing. We got to quit exposing ourselves to the th tactics and strategies of the enemy. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, familiar scripture. So humble yourselves before God. Resist. So I looked up the word resist. The resist means to withstand. Strive against or oppose the devil. And then the Bible says he will flee. So I looked up flee. It means run away, of course. Take flight to move from. So humble yourselves before God. Resist, withstand, strive against, oppose the devil, and he will flee. Run away, take flight, and, and to move from. See, we got to do something. When you're raging war, when you're carrying on the work, you got to resist the spirit of fatigue. You got to resist the spirit of distraction. You got to resist the spirit of frustration. One of the major weapons to Christians, my God, in momentum is disappointment and distractions. Yes. Disappointment. We get disappointed because people say they was going to come along to help us and they don't help us. Or they start out with us and they drop off and then we get discouraged. Woo. Disappointment, discouragement, and all that stuff is a major enemy yeah. to the work of God. And so I want to encourage you, my God, if God calls you to assignment, you don't get to quit on your assignment because didn't nobody show up. Right. God gave you the grace to get through. And if you continue to be found faithful, God's going to send people to help you do what he called you to do. What am I saying? God, what God calls for, he provides for. My first lady always telling me, it's like, it's like God always, one of her favorite words in private is God got a ram in the bush. But one step up or one shift, my God, another one step up and more come. See, I said, God always got our back. If you think about it from the genesis of this ministry, he always had us covered. He always sent what we need in this ministry to do that what he has called us to do. So you got the guard against discouragement. But I want you to take a personal look. I'm taking my time because I ain't got that much to give you. You got to ask yourself, what is in my life that's discouraging me that has nothing to do with my work yeah. in the house? What, did I get, what, did, what do I have going outside of church that if I clip, it will free me up? Mm. Mm. What people, what places, what things, what am I doing that's frustrating me and discouraging me? What have God, thank you, Holy Ghost, asked me to do? And because I have not done it, I did it, my God, now I'm being judged. What am I trying to say? Don't you, don't you know you and I, I and you, can bring trials and tribulations in our life that God never intended for us to go through yes. behind disobedience? Yes. Yes. And so then what we have to be careful about is that while we're carrying on God's work and assignment, that we don't allow things that has nothing to do with the assignment to discourage and disrupt the momentum in our lives. It's very simplistic, but when you think about what the Spirit of God is saying, that's why I'm taking my time, it's very profound. Because many people get discouraged and drop out on God. Quit on their pastors. Quit on their leaders. People will shift on you. People could be walking with you for two years, and their heart didn't change in the second year, and you never know it. It takes time for people's motives to show up, Pastor. That's why you got to keep walking. Bishop would always say, just keep walking. Yeah. Just keep walking. That's what he said, just keep walking. You look back, T.D. Jakes, you'll see. Just keep walking. When you look back, it was 70, now it's 12. It was 12, Tanya, now it's 3. Just keep walking. Yeah. That what is supposed to be clipped will be clipped. This is what get us. I'm still in the sermon. This will get us. When we start seeing people fall off, we get discouraged. Yeah. We start panicking. What is she going to think about me? What is he going to think about me? When you and I, I and you say, God, let your will be done in my life. God, I want to go higher. God, I want to be used. 
God, I want to be meat for the master use, whatever prayer that you're saying. So God said, okay, I'm honoring that. And when God started executing his will, when he started clip, clip, clipping, when he started removing, when he started adding, when he started stirring up stuff, my God, because God got to stir you up to bless you. He got to increase. Sometimes God will increase warfare to expose you because he's trying to get stuff out of you because he can't take it to you with the promised land. I told y'all that. So James said that you got to withstand the devil. Quit giving in to discouragement, especially if you're the one causing it. <laughs> so you're going to give in to the very thing that you cause. That's why I tell y'all, a man left to himself, no gender is doomed for destruction. Right. You, up, you, you giving in to discouragement, but you're the one causing it behind your choices. He said, I said before you, life and death, blessing and curses, choose life. But we choosing death. And so now we, 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 we give in to the very thing that we cause. That's a form of insanity. I've been there. We got to resist that. Strive against. Oppose the very things. Ask yourself, what do I need to strive against? What do I need to oppose? What, 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 what do I need to come against that's trying to come against me? What do I need to oppose? What do I need to resist? Who do I need to resist? What places do I need to resist? My God, what fleshly activities, what fleshly attitudes? What, what, is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it bitterness? Is it unforgiveness? What is it? What is it that I need to withstand that's interfering with my progress in God's kingdom? You see, the Spirit of God is making us look at us and not your neighbor right. and not the church. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing that's causing frustration? What are we doing that's causing me to keep relapsing? What am I doing? What is it about me, my God, that I can't seem to shake that when I know it's unhealthy for me? And I know he or she is unhealthy for me. Why is it that I keep going back to the stuff that I know that's causing me pain and frustration? Why? What is it? What is it? How, why am I not resisting? Why am I not withstanding, opposing the very stuff that's hurting me? Right. I was telling, I don't know, I might have been talking to you, Pastor Dean, but I, was, I don't know who I was talking to. But I, that realization that, that realization that, uh, the very thing that I love. I think I was fellowshipping with you, uh, uh, Sister Anthony, that I might have been. You know what I'm saying? I had to come to the realization that the very thing that I was going hard after was killing me. I was going hard after that form of life, but it was killing me. I had to have a revelation. Are you going hard after something that's killing you? Are you committed to something, somebody, some place? Oh, amen, y'all. Oh, amen. Thank y'all for agreeing with me. Oh, don't make me feel like I'm crazy up here. What are you going hard after that's killing you? And then you come up off in her and you give God with hey, leftovers. Because you're not steward in your life right after. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Don't abandon the work. I want you to take the word work and put don't abandon your assignment. Make it more personal. Because some of us, we go to work every day frustrated, hate our job, and ready to quit. I like what the late Dr. Miles you always say. If you go into a job every morning that you hate, you need to be trying to do something different. And millions and millions of people are going to jobs every morning, getting up every morning, going to a place that they hate. Who, yeah. yeah. amen, woman of God. So your assignment. Resist the discouragement. Resist frustration. Resist greed. Resist the different things that will disrupt, discourage. That's why the Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. When you carry on the work inside the house or when you carry on the work outside the house, when God, you're doing, fulfilling your assignment, you got to keep your eyes on the art and finisher of your faith. You can't look to the left. That's why he said don't look left, don't look right. My God, when you look with the natural, you get discouraged. When you look at people that start out with you that showed up to the meetings, my God, and now three months into the work, they no longer show up to the meetings, it can discourage you. Yeah. So, but so then you got to ask yourself, why am I really important? Why am I really doing this in the church? Because if you're not doing it for the right reason, your motives are going to be exposed. Because soon as stuff don't start going your way, you start complaining. You start dropping off. You start, Bishop taught me, don't become the very thing that you hate. You don't like, my God, what people are doing now, you starting to do the very thing that you didn't like. You didn't like that they didn't show up, now you're not showing up. You're becoming the very thing that you hate. Wow. You're complaining about something. And now you're doing the very thing you're complaining about. So you're discouraging your own self. Yeah. Are you coming against your own self? Are you opposing your own self? Ooh, this is heavy right here, baby. Are you causing your frustration? But it's me and her fault. It's his fault because he was supposed to port her, but he didn't come. So therefore, I'm mad, so I don't want to port her because I had to port her last Saturday. I'm just, come on. 
Is it, is it a work or is it an assignment? Thank you for the transition, Holy Ghost. Because when it's work, you want to abandon it. But when it's assignment, you don't get to abandon it because it's called covenant. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called covenant. Covenant is assignment. Jesus had to crawl to Calvary. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I don't want to. God forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's covenant. His assignment, his assignment, Pastor, kept him on the cross. His assignment made him get back up when they beat him half to death. His assignment, my God, who in his covenant with himself made him stay on the cross for you and I? Yeah. Oh, my God, don't get me started. I'm trying to take my time and teach you, my God. See, when it's work, you quit, but when it's assignment, you don't get to quit. Many of you look at what God has called you to do inside the house of the Lord is work. That's why you quit. But if you think about Christ and how he didn't quit, you shouldn't quit. Yes. Unless he tell you to quit. He's not going to tell you to quit. God going to tell you to transition. From one assignment to the next. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, I can't get nobody. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Oh, yeah. This is a good flow. Is the spirit of the Lord helping anybody? Yeah. Come on. Y'all talk to me. Is anybody being helped? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at number two. Don't abandon the work. Now, point number two. Don't abandon the right way. Uh-oh. Here's another one. Wow. Now we begin to compromise. Let's look at Nehemiah. It seems to have been Nehemiah's manner in life to give himself 100% into his work. Nehemiah said in verse 9, he says of chapter 6, he said, So I continue the work with even greater determination. And the reason why he said that is because they started a rumor. The Bible says in verse number five, the fifth time Sambalat's service came with an open letter in his hand. And this is what Sambalat said. There is a rumor. Look at the enemy. He's cunning. He's crafty. The Bible tells you and I that the enemy is cunning. He's crafty. The Bible says the, Sambalat him said there is a rumor among the surrounding nations. And Geshem tells me it is true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. And that is why you are building the wall. According to his report, this is what the enemy is saying to Nehemiah. According to his report, you plan to be their king. Verse 7 says, he also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim, who Pastor Ron, about, about, to proclaim about you. Look, there is a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. Verse 8 says, I replied, this is what Nehemiah said after the rumor. Why are you giving in to rumors? Now, Ely don't really like you, Shay. She was over there talking about you the other day and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? She talking about you think you all, look how you be washing, screaming, and hollering, all that's fake and all that stuff. <laughs> rumors. <laughs> Nehemiah says, I replied. See, this is why you got to know in whom you believe. Yeah. This is why you got to be sure to that what God has called you to do. This is why you can't be playing with this thing called spirituality, man. That's right. This is where you got to be grounded and rooted. This is where you got to get God in you. My God, you got to get your root system in God's kingdom. This ain't about quote no scripture. This is not about coming just to no prayer. You got to know, baby, because the enemy is going to war and the enemy is cunning and he's crafty. But I thank God for a man of God that had his life anchored and built on a sure foundation. Who and he had the spirit of the living God. Oh, my God. Living on the inside of Nehemiah said, I replied to this lie, this rumor. Come out. Come out. There is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. Verse 9 says, they were try they, he says, they were just trying to intimidate us. <laughs> Quit all that screaming. Don't take all that. <laughs> He's trying to worship like pastor peoples. <laughs> all that screaming. Even pastor, what are he doing? I feel you want everybody to see him. You know how y'all be hating? I know it is. It says, he, he, Nehemiah said, they were just trying to intimidate us. See, the enemy is always trying to intimidate you, to frustrate you, to make you tap out and quit, man. Yeah. And as I said before, some of it is the enemy, but some of it is ourselves. Yeah. So we got to see, we got to discern, thank you, Holy Ghost, what's enemy and what's flesh. Don't you know flesh will discourage you? Yeah. Flesh will make you stop the work, baby. Yeah. 
Flesh will make you quit on God. Flesh will make you abandon your assignment. They were just trying to intimidate us, imagine, imagining that they could discourage. There go that word. The number one weapon to Christians is discouragement. They tried to discourage us and stop us, I mean, stop the work. And so Nehemiah said, because you started this rumor, and because you're trying, to, you're trying to smother my prayer, you're trying to make me get over and sit down and act all dignified, you want me to be all seminary, you don't want me to scream, you want me to act all religious, you want me to sit still like God ain't done nothing for me, the devil is a lie, you want yeah. me to, my God, come up off of there and act like I'm going hard for Christ when I know me, you better ask somebody, oh my God, and so Nehemiah said, oh my God, so Nehemiah I said this right here, because, you, because you're trying to frustrate me and discourage me, look what he said. So I continue the work with even greater determination. So when the enemy come up against you, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to purpose, purpose in your mind, the Bible said. My God can do it greater and harder. So when the enemy is frustrating you and all on top of you, you ought to say, I can't wait to get to the house of the Lord so I can torment the devil through my water, so I can give God some glory. So I can encourage somebody. So I can pray for somebody. My God, he's going to torment me. I'm going to torment him. Uh, Nehemiah said I went harder with a greater determination. Why do you let the enemy distract you and discourage you? You quit on God. You all discouraged and frustrated. You come up off of there, you just sit down. Because he all you all defeated. Ah, you you going through hell. You ought to be ah hey! you ought to be about to lose your mind. You see, some of you don't take, they don't take, some of you, oh my God, some of you think you don't take all that. That's why I'm free and you defeated, baby. Oh, I ain't putting you down. I'm calling like a T.I.E. Where my free people at it going off of Christ Church? Yeah, I want to talk to some Joshua's up in here. Uh, we didn't cease from wondering that going off of Christ. We ain't wondering. We ain't no wondering generation. We'll possess us. Joshua and Caleb, them was possessors, my God. I'm going through all this personal pain, and you want me to come up off of there and act dignified. Enemy that picked off my children, enemy that torment my marriage, torment my mind, and you want me to come up off and act cute. You better ask somebody. So, they, so, so, so Nehemiah said, I'm going to go even harder. And then he said, to come down would have been a step down. Ooh, See the mindset. Nehemiah said, I can't come down. I'm not stepping down. I'm not dealing with chicken stuff. I'm not coming down to your rumors, your lies, your hate, and your jealousy. You can't intimidate me, your words, and how your perception of me. Oh, my God, how you feel about me, what you think about me, how you look at me. You, I, I, I ain't got time for none of that. But you know how many professing Christians, Pastor, can't handle that type of teaching? Because they wounded. Their self-esteem is messed up. Their self-confidence is messed up. They shouting, but they ain't free. And it ain't, some of it ain't because we ain't preaching. It's because they don't want to get free. Some people want to stay sick. They want somebody to always come to the rescue and say, poor me, poor me, you okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nehemiah said, my God, I, I ain't stepping down. That's too low. What Drake said, I started from the bottom, now I'm hurt, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I'm trying to make it where you understand it. Now, when I go to ORU tomorrow, if the Lord is coming, you see my verb is completely different. I get on their level. See, you got to become all things to all people to win somebody, baby. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank you for that too, woman of God. Quit stepping down. Only ten, if God has called you to this level, only reason why you should come down here is to get somebody. To, watch this though. Don't miss this. To take your time to get them and walk with them. Because see, they might not be ready to go from here straight up here. So you and I as leaders cannot expose people to something too soon. Because if everything is supposed to bless them with curse them, I might even kill them. See what I'm trying to say? You got to take your time and just let them walk. Mm. Are you stepping down? Get back on the wall. Quit stepping down. Discern what's you and what's, 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 the, what's the devil. Mm -hmm. And then once you find out, get you out the way, 
and you understand it's the devil, then you get God on the devil. That's what Nehemiah did. He prayed, he mourned, he fasted, and he went to the Lord. See, I'm trying to say, see, many of us are losing battle because we don't know which, if it's the devil or us. This is good Bible study tonight. I felt good, too. He said, I can't step down. He would have to turn his back on the right way. When you and I stop doing what we know to do right, and we choose by the flesh to do something wrong, we have just turned our back on God. The Bible says to those who know to do right, watch the verbiage, scripture, to those who know, that means you know. If you don't know, you, God can't hold you accountable. But when you know, you are held accountable. Jesus at 12 was held accountable. In the Jewish custom at 12, you considered a young adult. Jesus was accountable at 12. He told his mom and him, didn't you know I have to be about my father's business? They found him in the house teaching, sitting among scholars and so forth. God holds you and I accountable to what you and I know. Yeah. So what do they do, Pastor? Remember this. So all of us that are talking about God know my heart. He says, he says, those who know to do right, watch this, y'all, as the Spirit of God teach you and choose. You have to make a choice yeah. Yeah. to turn your back on God. Yeah. 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 See, it, 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 ain't, it ain't the assignment's fault. It ain't because Naila didn't come to church when she's supposed to ch come to church. You, you, you've been doing it for the last three weeks, and it's Naila's time to come work, and, but she uh, come, to the, come, 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 come hold the post, and she don't. So now you mad, you offended. You don't want to work, or you don't want to do what you need to do, so you just come down and sit down like, I don't care. Let them find somebody else. I done did it for the last three weeks. She will try to say, that's supposed to, Naila should have been here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what? She got called in to work. So what? Nobody, what? Nobody around to watch AJ. Listen, I'm doing this because I'm trying to get y'all to see. Look, this is Christian, but the Bible says, "Love thy neighbor yeah. as thyself." This is how we talk. This is how we look at the work of the assignment in God's house. Why you don't look like that at you? And you're not your job. Let somebody miss. Oh, I get, I get to get some overtime. That's good. I need more money anyway, so I go shopping. <laughs> see, see, see. God looks at that. That's motive. I'm being serious. I'm trying to make it as plain and simplistic as I can. Yes. Because many of us is holding up major breakthroughs and blessings because our attitudes is wrong yes. and our motives is out of order. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're called to assignment, Nehemiah, my God, if did nobody go to build with him, he had to build by himself. Because guess what? God gave him the assignment. Yes. Yes. And when God gives you assignment, Janice, he's going to send the people to help you carry out the assignment. Yes. You and I, even though we get discouraged sometimes, even though we get frustrated sometimes, even though we want to quit sometimes, even though we talk to God and say, God, help me. My God, we like Moses. God, what did I do to deserve all this? But if I got to go through all this with these people, why don't you just kill me? That's what Moses said. Read your Bible, you understand what I'm saying. I'm not playing up here. Moses, the burden of the people was so heavy. Moses said, God, if I got to carry this and go through this, kill me. What it's too heavy. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. And you know why it got heavy? Because he didn't have no overseer at the time. He didn't have no father. He was submitted to covenant. And so God said, okay, touch Jero. I mean, Jethro. What you're doing, son, you're going to kill yourself. Raise up some leaders to help you carry the work of the ministry. That's what we're trying to do and is doing here at going over Christ Church. But because our attitudes are so messed up in the world and in church, See what I'm trying to say? <laughs> so therefore, it's hard for us to submit because, you know, truth be told, we struggle with authority. That's true. Yes. Yes. And so when God brings you up under submission, submit. Yeah. Okay. Sub, come up under, submit. You have a problem with submitting if you don't like her or him. Because you think that it should have been you and not them, so I ain't going to submit. But you want God to bless your life. Yes. When God said, okay, I know that you struggle with submission, or you struggle with women authority or man authority, I'm going to place you up under this woman because I'm trying to break that out of you because what I'm taking you, that's going to interfere. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Good yeah. teacher. Yeah. Good pastor. <laughs> I asked for the apostolic anointing, the father of the church, and I think that's what God is doing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Submit. It's the reason why you connected to certain people. Don't abandon the assignment too soon. Don't get ahead too soon. Don't leave too soon. I thank God I never got to the point 
Naida, Madeline, Pastor Ron. Because I was preaching, going, preaching, going, preaching, people getting saved, all that. And now I'm saying, Bishop ain't teaching me nothing, so I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I ain't learning from him no more. Mm -hmm. I'm leading people to Christ just like him. I got hundreds and hundreds of people following me just like and preaching. So now I'm finna leave. I thank God I didn't abandon the assignment. Yeah. I thank God I stayed up under the cover, man. Yeah. I thank God that I stayed submitted. Yeah. I said, see, see, everything I'm teaching y'all live in my own life. Yeah. Yeah. Still to this day. Yeah. Still to this day. Yeah. Many of us is out of position because we come from up under submission. Mm -hmm. Oh, we may be going to work. We may have breath in our body. We may have some money. But are you in position? Are you submitted to that with God and who God had you submitted to? Sometimes God will let you come up under taskmaster because he's training you. And also, God won't expose you to stuff so you can know not what, so you can know what not to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But don't miss your lessons along the way. Yeah. And God would also connect you with people so you can help people. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I? Janice would say, "Why in the world am I going in jails and I ain't never did none of this?" <laughs> See what I'm saying? God will connect you with people and it ain't about you. Janice ain't never been in jail and all that stuff, and she's in jail every week. She ain't, she, she ain't dealt with all this stuff, but she's in jail. She, I mean, she, look at the type of ministry, that God, uh, the assignment that God called the woman of God to. And she never done none of that type of stuff. Amen. Are y'all benefiting Amen. from just the beginning? Let's give God a hand for just the beginning. You know why we struggle with the assignment? Because if it don't feel right, look right, and we don't visualize it, we push it. We still form it. Quit still forming the will of God in your life. Can I tell you this as I get ready to move this last point? The will, of, the will of God in your life is not pretty. The person that God would use to train you, he ain't handsome. I'm not talking about looks. I'm talking about his character. Juju, why are you going to Greenwood Christian Center? They told me. Why are you sitting up under that white man? I will come to your man's meetings, but I don't want to go to that white man's church. Of course, y'all know I didn't talk about that. That's what, he, that's what I got many partners that never came to the church. When I go other places to preach, they will come. Are you struggling with prejudice? And so if I had listened to the enemies, if I had listened to the Sam Ballas and Tobias, yeah. I would have came from up under submission, and I wouldn't have got the impartation and the transfer. Oh, my God, y'all missed it. The transfer of anointing on my life because I let the enemies and the rumors and the perception of people and what people yeah. think move me out of my retirement. But I got the full importation. Yes. Stay submitted. Amen. Don't get ahead of God. Amen. Stay up under submission. Because he know what he's doing. Mm. Don't turn your back. Don't abandon the right way. Stay focused. Seek first the kingdom. Write down Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. The Bible says, my God, above all else, guard your heart. Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. Above all else, guard your heart. That means set boundaries on your mind. Woo, guard your mind. Don't you know your mind will make you drift away from the assignment on your life? Don't you know your mind will make you shipwreck and give up when you were supposed to give up? Yes. Your mind is a cold thing. Guard your mind. God, your mind will make you quit when you were supposed to quit. It says, for everything you do flows from it, meaning your thoughts. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Uh-oh. Keep, keep corrupt talk far, far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the past for your feet and be steadfast in all of your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Stay on the wall. When you and I start getting off the wall, we turn from the path of righteousness. When you and I allow compromising, when we don't keep our eyes focused on God, when we still allow ungodliness to come up out of our mouth, when we start engaging in my God in conversation and different stuff like that, don't you know the enemy will try to get in so that he can corrupt us from the inside out. Oh, I remember when Pastor Tamara Bennett, my God, prophesied inside of going a Greenwood Christian Center. He said the enemy is not going to come from without. He's going to come from within. He's going to come get amongst the church, my God, and dwell amongst the people and then start methodically turning down from the inside. 
Are you turning your life down from the inside? The Bible says a wise woman builds up a house, a foolish woman turns it down. The Bible says it's better to go on a rooftop. Oh, I'm not trying to bash my daughters than to live in a house with a I'm finna go, I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Are you turning down your life? Are you building up your life? Your house, your physical temple, are you turning it down? Are building up? What are you putting in your temple? What is destroying you and I, I and you from the inside? What is making you abandoned the right way? Who is making you abandoned? What is making you abandoned? What is making you turn away? Is it discouragement, fatigue, frustration, listening to rumors, trying to get ahead of God? I'm just throwing stuff out there. These type of things will make you abandon the right way. Your pastor since April the 30th of 1995 been on this right way. From 95 to present, however many years that is, 20 plus years. Why are you following him? You called a pastor. You called a, see, I, I never abandoned the right way. I'm trying to father you. I never abandoned the right way. I never listened to the rumors. Did I get discouraged along the way, Stephanie? Yes, I did. But I stayed to the assignment. Did I want to quit sometime along the way, Shay? Yes, Pastor did. But I reminded myself he didn't quit on me. Yeah. 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 Did me and Bishop get into it? Yes. Did I pout and sit on the front row? My wife said I sure did. So watch this. I'm trying to help you. I'm back through. So, 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 but you know why? Because see, because God was stretching me. Yeah. Yeah. See, when God stretch you, ooh, Jackie, my God. When, when God stretch, it gets uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh my God, when God starts pulling on you, when God starts dropping his assignment deep into your life, when you start going deeper and deeper into the things of God, when God starts building you for that work that he specifically called you for and created you for, it's uncomfortable. See, many of us want to control the will of God. We don't, want to be, we don't want to be perplexed. We don't want to be troubled. We don't want to be stretched. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. We, don't, we, we want to control everything, my God. And I had a little bit of that too. And so I get mad. And so when I wouldn't answer the phone, he'll call Janice and say, have you talked to your brother? I said he would call Janice because I ain't answer. Mad. Because I wanted something to go this way, minister Terry, but it went a different way. I was trying to get myself from up under submission yeah. because it wasn't happening when I wanted to happen. Yeah. And I thank God for Pastor Manny. Yeah. He said, what did your spiritual father ask you to do? Mm. I ain't doing it because I didn't want to sit down. Go sit down. <laughs> I fought it for three months. After past, one of the pastors transitioned, my guy, he said, I need you to sit right there. I said, I ain't doing it because I don't want people to think I'm trying to be that pastor that left. So I ain't doing it. So I sat over there and stayed over there. And he, he said, I need you right here because I got to know who's with me because too many people turned their back on me. But I wasn't doing it. She'll tell you, she'll tell you, and she'll tell you. But then it took a ram in the bush down that highway called 405, Oklahoma City, area code. He said, what did your spiritual father ask you to do? So I'm a man in authority, but I'm a man under authority. So I finally went to him. He said, you ready? Every Sunday when we go back there to pray, he said, you going to sit beside me? I'm like, nope. I walk right out and go sit over there. But then it came time when I got the clarion call. When Pastor Manny said, what did your father ask you to do? I wouldn't sit. So I prayed in the circle like we do. He said, you going to sit with me, sit beside me? I said, yes, I am. He said, good. And then, you know, Bishop smooth as the other side of the pillow. <laughs> and he walked right on out. What am I trying to say as I close the letters up out there? I almost missed it. I'm glad you caught that, Tanya. I'm all, I almost missed it. Amen. My flesh almost caused me to shipwreck yeah. and missed a full importation. The full. Some of you was content with being sprinkled. But I got the full mantle. He told me Monday is our close. He said there is no other church that come close to the spirit that was in Greenwood Christian Center than going home for Christ Church. That's a testimony. When he talking about size, because size don't mean nothing. We talking about spiritual development. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maturity. Maturity. That's a compliment. Because he just don't say stuff for the sake of saying stuff. If he speak it, it's something behind it. Mm. 
Ooh, Lord, I thank you for that apostolic. Our duty before the Lord is to faithfully carry out his commands and to do his work efficiently, joyfully, faithfully. And to remember this, y'all, for those that's actually working in an assignment and going off for Christ Church, to step down before time you compromised. Don't kill your purpose. Don't affect your future. Stay on the wall. Figure out which flesh. Figure out what's the devil. And then God, give God permission to intervene in your life. Look at the discouragement. Look at the frustration. Evaluate. Paul said, examine yourself daily. Look at the stuff that's going on that's agitating you. Look at the stuff that's frustrating you. Look at that stuff and see what the source is. And make sure you look at self before you look at somebody else. Don't listen to the rumors. There's a lot of principles that God dropped on you. Keep your eyes on God. Get your eyes off of people. Stay focused on God. Our duty is clear. Refuse to listen to the words and challenges of the devil, y'all. Stay in the battle for Jesus. I'm not talking about just for the church. Stay in the battle for Jesus. God's still looking for somebody that will stand up for him. God's been good to us, y'all. Do you love God enough to say, you know what, God, you went through all this for me. You went through all this suffering and pain for me. The least I can do is stay on the wall. The least I can do is try to save as many people as I can. The least I can do is bring glory and honor to your life. The least I can do is present my life as a living sacrifice. The least I can do, Brother Boyd, is help somebody else get clean and sober because God helped me get clean and sober. The least I can do is pray for somebody that's hurting. The least I can do is buy somebody, my God, whose mama may be in the prison or daddy or, or angel tree. God, what can I do? All that you have done for me, how can I serve God in the kingdom? I thank God for the kingdom mindset that Dr. Miles Rowe taught us, my God. It is an honor, y'all, and a privilege to have an opportunity, watch my verbiage, to do business inside of God's house. Anything that you do from sweeping, from the media, from the sound, from recording, from greeting, portering, working with the kingdom cud, working in the youth ministry, you have to understand that is an honor. Don't you know that God could use anybody? Don't you know you could still be in your mess? Don't you know you could still be somewhat messed up? Don't you know that it didn't have to turn out like this for you? We got to get back as a people of God to being grateful for all that God has done and is doing for you and I. It's an honor. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to do business in your kingdom. Thank you that the deaf angel, Melody, passed over my house last night. That I didn't die. That I didn't wake up with a stroke. That that bullet that they had, that shootout, my God, it didn't kill my son or my daughter. My God, my God, that car wreck, my God, that was on 15th, 11th and Garnett or whatever that was, Amingo a Memorial, I was listening to on the news, my God, and they said they had to bring the fire, fire truck and the ambulance. Thank God that wasn't my wife, that wasn't my daughter. It's an honor to be here tonight, Val. Yeah. It's an honor to do business, Diane, in God's kingdom. It's an honor to, 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 to clap my hands and, and to lay my hands on my son. It's an honor. Stay on the wall for God. Stay on the wall for God. Get your second win. Get all the stuff about your heart, my God, that, that, that's discouraging you, frustrating you, making you want to quit. Serve God with excitement. Be found faithful. Stay committed. Stay dedicated. When the rumors come, do like Nehemiah said, I'm going even harder. Yeah. When you lie on me and talk about me, try to smother me, when the enemy messing with your marriage, messing with your children, and you out of there and increase your tenacity for God. Yeah. 